Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at an Absan Legends deck built around the new 3 mana Kethys, the Hidden Hand. 3 mana for a 3 4 legendary creature that says legendary spells we cast cost 1 generic mana less to cast, so it gives a nice discount to all legendary spells. And basically, our entire deck consists of legendary spells. And we can also exile two legendary cards from our graveyard, and then until end of turn, each legendary card in our graveyard can be cast from our graveyard as well. So that's a nice little recursion engine in the late game, giving us a ton of card advantage. So the deck is built around Kethys, but in reality the deck is built more around Urza's Ruinous Blast, which is one of the great payoff cards for playing this type of historic legendary focused deck, giving us a 5 mana a legendary sorcery that we can only cast as long as we control a legendary creature or planeswalker. This list is not playing any planeswalkers, since we're also playing two copies of the Immortal Sun, so we'll have to rely on legendary creatures to enable the Ursus Ruinous Blast, which lets us exile all non-land permanents that aren't legendary. So it won't get rid of opposing planeswalkers, and it won't get rid of opposing legendary creatures, but otherwise this can clean up the board nicely, and of course a one-sided sweeper for the most part, since all our creatures are legendary, so those won't get exiled by the Ruinous Blast. So on the one hand we have Ursus Ruinous Blast, to deal with all the non-legendary stuff, and then to deal with Planeswalkers we have two copies of the Immortal Sun as a legendary artifact, so also won't get swept up by Urza's Runus Blast, and then Planeswalkers' loyalty abilities can no longer be activated, and we also get to draw two cards per turn, or spells get reduced by one generic mana, and creatures we control also get plus one plus one, so it does a lot of different things for our deck. And to add a ton of consistency to the deck, at 2 mana we have 4 copies of Board the Weatherlight, which lets us take a look at the top 5 cards of our library. We can reveal a historic card from among those and put it into our hand. Of course, historic cards include artifacts, legendaries, both creatures and planeswalkers, and sagas. We don't have any sagas in this deck, but it does help us find Urza's Ruinous Blast, which is a legendary sorcery, which is also historic, and then the rest goes on the bottom of our library in a random order. So Board of Weatherlight helps us find all these key cards, like the Ruinous Blast, like the Immortal Sun when facing Planeswalkers, and can also help us find a legendary creature if we need to enable the Ruinous Blast in the first place. And speaking of legendary creatures, at 2 mana we've got the full 4 copies of Emara, Soul of the Accord. There's not a wide selection of legendary creatures at 2 mana, and we do want to have as many cheap legendary creatures as possible to enable all these different synergies. But Emara is still a pretty good card by herself, 2 mana for a 2-2 two -two creature, and when Emara becomes tapped we get to make a 1-1 one -one white soldier creature token with lifelink. So we have a bit of a token theme going on because of the legendary creatures we have to include in our deck, so we'll also build around this go wide token theme a little bit. We also have two copies of Shana, which is also kind of a payoff for going wide, since Shana's power and toughness is each equal to the number of creatures we control, so by default it's going to be a 1-1 one -one creature, but the more tokens we can make, the bigger Shana becomes. And then she also can be the target of abilities or opponent's control, which is very relevant nowadays with the Fairy Time Raveler, which cannot bounce Shana. If her opponent has removal like, uh, let's say, Prison Realm, which enters battlefield and then targets the creature, that also doesn't work on Shana, since that counts as an ability targeting Shana. But of course she does still die to normal spot removal spells and other sweeper effects. But otherwise it just gives us a nice cheap legendary creature to enable our different synergies that later turns into a pretty big threat for the opponent to deal with. Then at 3 mana we've got our full playset of Kethys, which also of course works quite well with all legendary cards, since if we just need to put additional cards in our graveyard to enable Kethys' second ability, we can just run out a second copy of a legend, and one of them will die to the legendary rule, end up in our graveyard, and then maybe we get access to a different card in our graveyard thanks to Kethys. Of course Urza's Ruinous Blast, one of the more important cards we might want to get back from the graveyard to wipe the board. Then we also have the full playset of Oath of Kaya, despite not having any planeswalkers, we're still running the full playset as a 3 mana legendary enchantment that when it enters the battlefield deals 3 damage to any target and we gain 3 life. So just a nice cheap removal spell helps pad our life total against more aggressive decks. And again, another legendary permanent that can easily end up in our graveyard if we play duplicates, so we can fuel the graveyard for Kethys and also just kind of helps us bridge the gap, since we don't have much else going on at 3 mana otherwise. Then at 4 mana we've got two copies of Shalai, Voice of Plenty, as a 3-4 flyer, that gives us and other creatures we control hexproof, 
So against a mono red burn deck, for example, they will need to get past Shalai before they can start burning our face again. And Shalai also has a powerful mana sink. For six mana, we can put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control, which also plays great with our go white token theme that we have, thanks to some of our legendary creatures like Amara and Trostani, which we will get to in a second. Then we have two copies of Traxos as a 4 mana 7-7 seven, seven Trampler, and Traxos enters the battlefield tapped and doesn't untap during our untap step, so that's a bit of a drawback. But whenever we cast a historic spell, we get to untap Traxos, so it's usually not too difficult to keep untapping Traxos. We can also kind of give it pseudo vigilance if we have multiple historic spells to keep untapping Traxos. And of course, a 7-7 seven, seven Trampler for just 4 mana, especially since we can easily get a discount from Kethys, making it even cheaper, means that Traxos is a pretty nice threat to help us close out the game quickly. And then we also have two copies of a Weatherlight, so we've got four copies of Border Weatherlight, which can even help us find a Weatherlight itself as a nice 4 mana vehicle, 4-5 flyer, crew 3, which means we have to tap at least 3 power worth of creatures in order to animate our Weatherlight into a 4-5 creature. And vehicles synergize quite nicely with Emara, since even if we tap Emara in order to crew a vehicle, we'll still get that 1-1 one, one lifelink token, so it doesn't have to be attacking or convoking something. We can even uh, crew a Weatherlight in order to get that 1-1 one, one token from Emara, which is quite nice. And then whenever the Weatherlight deals combat damage to a player, we can look at the top 5 cards of our library, reveal a historic card from among them, and put it into our hand. So this is another way to gain card advantage, get a bit of card selection, and help us find the Urza's Ruinous Blast, which is one of our key cards that we basically want to draw every game. So Weatherlight just gives us a nice alternate angle of attack, and also gives us a permanent that can survive an opposing sweeper effect like Akaya's Wrath, and then helps us rebuild by finding more action. And then at 5 mana we've got 3 copies of Trostani Discordant as a 1 for creature that is joined by 2 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens with lifelink. And other creatures we control also get plus 1 plus 1 thanks to Trostani. So plays great with our go white token theme that we have with some of our other legends as well. And at the beginning of our end step each player gains control of all creatures they own. Which is a nice little bonus when facing hostage takers or agents of treachery for example. And then of course we've got our full playset of Urza's Ruinous Blast, which is one of the centerpieces of the deck, and the deck wouldn't really function without it. And then at 6 mana we've got our two copies of Immortal Sun to shut down opposing planeswalkers, draws additional cards and give us a nice mana discount so we can empty our hand faster. And then taking a look at our mana base, we also need to mention our three copies of Mox Amber, which is also an important piece of the puzzle, giving us a zero mana legendary artifact that can tap to add one mana of any color among legendary creatures and planeswalkers we control. So if we control Imara or Shan in the early game, that can help us ramp into one of our four drops on turn three. It doesn't quite work the way we want it to with Traxos, since it can't make colorless mana, but it does work great with Emara, Shana, Kathis, Shalai, and Trostani. And of course, historically speaking, Moxen are very powerful artifacts that always need to be respected, giving us free mana is a very powerful effect. And then also being a legendary artifact that if we play a duplicate ends up in our graveyard, means we can easily fuel Kethys' second ability as well, which is quite relevant. And just ramping into an early Mortal Sun or Trostani can often make the difference. And then taking a look at the rest of our mana base, we have one basic plains, one basic forest, three copies of Godless Shrine, three isolated chapels, three overgrown tombs, we've got two copies of Temple of Malady, giving us a nice little scry one action to smooth out our draws. We've got three copies of Woodland Cemetery, four Sample Groves, and four Temple Gardens. The reason for the Temple of Malady instead of Temple of Silence is mostly because we have a bunch of white two drops. So if it comes to sequencing, it's nicer to be able to play this uh, Temple on turn three alongside one of our white two drops. Whereas if we have Temple of Silence and maybe need to white mana early for one of these two drops, that doesn't work out quite as nicely. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Hand seems keepable. If we can connect with Amara once and make that token, then we can crew the weather lights, which is going to be pretty important. Mana base is a little bit painful. Godless Shrine. No, feel free to Thought Racer. Oh, it's gonna be Hero Precinct 1 instead. Nah, I'll offer the trade. Which creature is a better token maker? We'll find out soon enough. Well, 
hopefully we can pick up a land. No attacks, all right. Now we've got a nice uh, token engine going here. Can just crew the weather lights end of turn to make a token with Amara. Can also block the hero. Sure. I bet they won't expect to see this. Take Straxos, the only castable spell at the moment. No, what? I wanted to make a token. I guess we'll crew it now. I might need to put a stop end of turn. Yeah, maybe that's required, sadly. Alright, let's see what we can find. If we get to attack here, they could just have Tyrant Scorn, I guess, to bounce it, in which case we just replay it. Cast down doesn't work, the spark sadly does. Alright, well, that's too bad. Guard Mage. Well, at least everything dies to this uh, Runa's Blast. Shana. Since we're gonna ruin this blast, we don't really care about our 1 1 token. Ah, that's better. They don't know about the second copy. Alright. Oh no. Yeah, they've added some new animations in this uh, recent patch. Tyrant Scorn, Lava Coil, um, Crowd of Carnarium, apparently Angra's Rampage as well. Let's slow this down. I have a plan. Another hero. Don't know if I want to... Runa's Blast just for the hero. Let's just play Mortal Sun. Shut down this Teferi. Opponent could have another D-Spark at the ready here, but so it goes. Do we care about the static ability on Teferi? Mm, don't think we have any instants. But if they answer Immortal Sun, then we might want to kill Teferi. So sure, we'll send Trostani at Teferi here. Oh yes, please. Please kill my Trostani. Right, we're kind of going off here. Let's uh, take a trip on the weather lights. Find ourselves an Amara. Sure. Jump. Want to be a bit mindful of Kaya's Wrath, although if they're playing hero, they might not have Kaya's Wrath. Thought very sure. A Runa's Blast. No! Don't take my mortal son. Hmm. Well, that's not really going to work out for the opponent, since if our opponent plays Trostani, we get it back. They do get to make two tokens, but uh, we'll get our Trostani back. And if they did steal the Immortal Sun, then I could have just uh, cast Aruna's Blast number two. 
This is an interesting opening hand. It's got a lot of potential if we pick up any of our five or six mana plays. So we'll try it. Next turn we could Temple, Impassioned Orator, some sort of life gain deck. I could Oath of Kaya that, I think I would rather just play a Traxos. And then the Oath can untap Traxos on the following turn. I could double Mox Hammer plus Temple, probably better to save the Temple. And then I don't really want to trade. Since imagine trading and then opponents killing Traxo somehow, then we're left with no legendary creature in case we top deck some of our cars that care about those. Right, Pride made a great target for Oath of Kaya. And Shalai is great too. But I think we would rather kill Pride Mate while we can. Board seems fine. Can help us find whatever we need. Still not trading for Shana here. It's a reasonable start for us. Well, that's not a card I knew existed. Pretty good here, not gonna lie. Maybe I undervalued the orator and we should have traded for it with Shanna anyway. All right, let's see what we can find. Of course, Runa's Blast would be on top of our list. Katha seems fine. Could grab Oath to kill Orator. I think the game plan is to eventually find a Runa's Blast to sweep up the board. I could play Mox Hammer just to untap Traxos. Ooh, a Lyra Dombringer. Well, that doesn't die to Runa's Blast, so that's kind of a long-term issue. So not sure how we'll try and solve that problem. Yeah, I think we just gotta say go. Mox Amber pretty nice alongside Kethys, since that's an easy way to get cards in our graveyard. Could also play a second Shana just to get more cards in the graveyard for Kethys, but there's nothing we want to cast from the graveyard at the moment. So probably just gotta say go. So first we need a Runa's Blast and then I guess shall I can become big enough to tussle with a Lyra Dombringer. Fried mate doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, this Gideon's company is actually pretty impressive. Thirteen thirteen, pretty casual. All right, I mean, I can just pump uh, with Shalai here. Probably worth two damage. Well, as long as our opponent stays back, we're not too sad since we have time to top deck. And we've got a lot of good top decks. Once they start attacking with that company, we could be in trouble. Lyra's attacking, gotta take five for now. And next turn we can block. Uh, 
Well, that's the card we needed. So if I do it now, how much damage do we have? I guess that's lethal. Opponent can gain life and respawn, so yeah. Alright. But that's what I like about this deck, like with four Urza's Runus Blasts, four Board of Weatherlight to find Urza's Runus Blast, and the two Weather Lights themselves, which can also help us dig, and then Kathis to get Runus Blast back from the graveyard. We're pretty consistent at finding at least one copy before the game is over. And yeah, I mean, the card is pretty backbreaking against a lot of strategies. All right, reasonable opening hand. Up against the black white vampires. Oath of Kai is going to be pretty useful here. Can kill whatever blocker they play. Could also play Kathis, since that survives the 3 damage from a potential Soren. It's probably better since it's not like we need the Oath right now. Their Surin. They can kill Lemara if they want to. But then. Alright, never mind. Svona put in play. Alright, Svona could be an issue, although we got lucky to draw a cemetery. I could just double O with Svona. And then attack Sorin with everyone. Sounds pretty good. I could also attack first. If they block Svona on the 1 1, I can finish off Svona with Oath. That sounds a bit messy if they get the chance to block Kathis. I think just double oathing is the way to go. And I kind of want to step our mana properly. I kind of want oath in the graveyard anyway for Kathis. And then I can send all at Soren to make sure he dies. If they trade for Amara, it's not the end of the world. Food in the graveyard for Kathis' ability. Alternatively, I could have also just played Trostani, which would have also been reasonable, although there's a chance that then Vona sticks around, kills Trostani, and things kinda go bad from there. Here I'm not opposed to casting the Ruinous Blast to just kind of clear these creatures or opponent has so they can flip the landing and their vampire synergies become weaker. And we probably want a Ruinous Blast before playing Trostani. I can probably attack first so we get a bit of life. Well our deck is pretty sweet. It's got a lot of interesting things going on. This is legendary, so this won't get exiled. We're beating the opponent down. 
they could be holding some Champions of Dusk or Sanctum Seeker that they could only play now. So not quite worth it to Runus Blast. Is it worth it to attack to get in 3 damage? Don't think so. Just gonna chill. They could chain together some Champions of Dusk here, which is not ideal. We're hoping to draw a Mortal Sun. The Weather Lights would be great. Let's see if we can find it. All aboard. Oh, there it is. Next turn we can start attacking with it. Can also crew it defensively as a good blocker. Cast down a token, sure. Can still crew it with what we have in play. Finds a temple. Keeps guard on top. Let's uh, go ahead and crew. And then I might just Runa's Blast second main here. Kethis is tempting. Can go Kethis into Runa's Blast. Set up lethal for next turn. Could also cast Aruna's Blast from the graveyard, actually. It's probably better. So exile Kethis and Emara. Cast Aruna's Blast from the graveyard. Damn. Showing the vampires who's boss. Alright, the sand's okay if we draw a third land. Can basically be any land. So yeah, on the draw we can probably keep. It's got some pretty good game against an aggressive deck. And that was a good pickup. We've got a turn to Amara, turn three, Kathis, turn four, can do all sorts of things. Facing Teamer, if this is the Teamer Reclamation deck, that's probably not a great matchup. Counter spells in general, probably not what we want to be facing. Could also be Elementals, in which case we're fine. Alright, Amber Cats, that's acceptable. Could just Oath of Kaya that, since their opponent seems to be missing land drops. Yeah, that seems fine. Thunderkin Awakener. So can probably expect some Scorchers from the opponent's deck. So we're good to attack with Amara. And then probably just play Kethis to set up four or more expensive spells. I see. A Domri's Ambush to put a counter on the Awakener to grow it and maybe get back some more expensive creatures from the graveyard. That's neat. Probably just uh, play Shalai here. We could like board the Weatherlight to hope to find a Mox Amber to make it more likely to play Trostani next turn. I think just playing a big flyer is probably better.
And there's a Risen Reef. Alright. So this is where the card advantage starts kicking in for the elemental deck. And we need to try and contain it. Alright, land was good, so now we get to jam Trostani. And I think an attack with everyone's probably okay. They can eat a 2-2, two -two, take 10. They could jump with the Risen Reef. And then try and get it back with the Awakener, but then the Awakener also dies. Well, opponent had kind of a medium draw. Both against Turn on Mountain is probably good enough. So that's gone. And light up the stage. Finds Spear Spear. Alright, this could be a good opportunity to just play Kathis. And then save the Oath for next turn. And just put a big blocker in play for Pyromancer. If they two for one themselves, we have a backup. It does cost us two life, which I'm not a fan of, but... We'll make up for it. Yes, yeah, some mono red decks play Amber Hall instead of Pyromancer now, especially if they play the Phoenix or the yeah the one three Spitfire. So again, we're fine if they use a burn spell here since we have a backup Kathis. Not a light with stage perhaps. Secure face. Secure face. Alright, now it's a close decision whether or not we Oath or Kathis first. Let's say they have a 3 damage burn spell and draw another 3 damage burn spell, then we're dead. If they don't, then playing Kathis first might be better. Then we also get access to Shalai. Maybe I should just go like Oath into Shalai and then there's no way we lose. Yeah, it's probably safer. See what's on top first, maybe that changes our mind. Backup Kathis, probably don't need that. Alright, let's see what they have. Land and uh, Wizard's Lightning. Alright, so we would not have died, but still reasonable to play it safe. Now they need two burn spells to get rid of Shalai. And in the meantime, we get to get in a bunch of damage. Now it feels like we're pretty far ahead. Opponent explodes. Alright, um, we're missing the cheap legendary creature to enable Mox Amber, but hopefully Bord can find us a Kathis or some other 2-mana creature. Mox also way to untap Traxos. Up against Mono White, so this matchup is all about Runa's Blast, and there it is. So now we just need to survive long enough to be able to cast it. And it's usually game over. I guess we'll take a Shalai over a Redundant Mox. So we'll need a fourth land or a cheap uh, legendary creature here. This can help us find one. Mm, probably bottoming. Eh, it's close. It does get us closer to Immortal Sun. So now the concern is like multiple Conclave Tribunals to get rid of Shalai and Traxo, so we can't cast Runa's Blast. I'll keep land. It's a painless land as well on turn 4. 
Don't want to take any unnecessary damage. Gideon. Alright, Gideon is an issue since that doesn't die to the Runus Blast. So I think I'll play Traxo since that's potentially a clean way to kill Gideon on the following turn. Whereas Shalai might not be good enough. And hope they don't have the Conclave Tribunal now. Otherwise we're in trouble. Could also play the Moxo and tap Traxos, but I think I would rather have my opponent underestimate Traxos. And I can probably afford to take a little bit of damage here. Because if I untap Traxos, they're also even more incentivized to play something like a Tribunal. Whereas now they might not. Uh, Mox Amber is not enough for us to cast the Runus Blast. It has to be a creature or a planeswalker. Witness. Bodyguard, so they could still cast a Tribunal. Vanguard, alright. So now we're safe. Opponents emptied their entire hand on the table here. Mox doesn't make mana with Traxo since it's colorless, but we've got the Godless Shrine here. And yeah, this is kind of a blowout. Exile means Adanto Vanguard and Dauntless Bodyguard don't help, as your opponent's gonna find out in a second. And these Witnesses and Tithe Takers don't leave anything behind. Traxos, exterminate! I was channeling my inner Sato Kaiba there. Or Yugi, pick a side. Alright, the sand needs a third land. What the sand could really use is a pot of greed, which allows me to draw two cards from my deck. But in uh, in the absence of a pot of greed, I think I'll keep and be a little greedy and hope to get there. Need the land. That's how you lose the monorad, I guess. I think our matchup's okay. Actually, maybe want to discard given Kathis. But yeah, I could have played a Mox Amber, so I don't discard to hand size. Opponent gets to puke their entire hand into play. Temple Garden, you're late. That didn't work. <laughs> uh.
All right, so we get to play Kethys at least. And the Runa's Blast is a card we need in the matchup to clean up all those zombies. So we have a, a chance here. And uh, the important part about Runa's Blast is also that we still get to build up our board. It's not like they're really killing our creatures. And once we do Runa's Blast, we usually can attack for almost lethal, or in two turns we can set up lethal, which is a big part of it. Uh, for now, we'll just attack and play Kethys. I guess I could have saved myself two life here. Could have just played a Mox Amber. Keeping it kind of a secret has a small advantage, I guess. They might not expect the explosiveness from the Mox Amber. And it can help us untap a Traxos. That's another reason. Alright. I guess... Uh, Traxos it is. Since Runa's Blast ends up exiling the tokens from Trostani, so that's not a perfect play. No need to play the Mox Amber now, I guess, since we don't need Traxos on defense. The fairy bounce Kethys. And do they have the escape shift as well? Because now we're unable to cast Runa's Blast unless we draw into a land. Just a root. That's fine. Alright, so just replay Kethys. Traxos face, and then Amara face, tokens at the ferry. We will meet again. And yeah, next turn this Runa's Blast should be lethal. They might even be dead without a Runa's Blast, to be honest. But this should seal the deal. Decent hands. Rakdos aggro. And this could be a challenge. Although Runa's Blast, a nice answer to gutter bones. Runa's Blast might just be an underexplored card in standard. It's definitely very powerful. How does Amara die? Badek. Nothing. Four mana. Contempt, Lava Coil. Alright, it's a little annoying. Still don't really want to oath this Gutter Bones. Now if they also kill Emara, we can no longer cast Runa's Blast. So their removal heavy hand is actually 
lining up quite well against what we're doing. Probably just oathing the gutter bones now. Or not. I guess I can wait a turn in case we top deck a creature to Crudus. Alright. Now I'll oath the Reaper. Important to note, if we crew the Weatherlight, it turns into a legendary creature, which enables the Runa's Blast as well. Could oath the Gutter Bones as well now. Might want to wait a turn to see if they play something like another Reaper or Judith. An uncrewed Weatherlight will not let us cast the Runa's Blast. Has to be crewed. Uh, if we have a bunch of tokens from Trostani, for example, then uh, we can still at least crew the weather lights and cast Runa's Blast. A eh, bit of an awkward draw here. Need to find a cheap uh, legendary creature here. Even a two mana one lets us cast Runa's Blast right away. Not our oath. Does it keep us alive? I guess it does. Not the best draws. Opponent had uh, early removal to line up against our early creatures and uh, never got to cast Runa's Blast or Crew Weatherlight. Alright, fine opener. With access to board the Weatherlight. Could be anything. Now we do have to be careful with the land sequencing since Chapel comes into play tapped at the moment because of this basic forest. So I might actually play the Chapel tapped on turn one so we can board on turn two in case we need to play something like uh, an Amara or Shalai. So next turn we can go Temple Amara. Probably up against the Feather deck, which... Probably not an amazing matchup. Feather is legendary, they're pretty fast, they can take out the early legends to shut down Runa's Blast. But we'll see. Probably actually worth it to Oath this Legionnaire before it gets out of hand. It is tempting to Amara because then we get to play our tap land into Traxos. Do we need that? It's probably fine. Let's just cast Immortal Sun. We get to double spell here. And hopefully one of our two creatures survive. Alright, so we get to cast our Immortal Sun, which is probably better than Traxos.
What are we shocking? Reckless Rage, fair enough. Are they gonna let Amara go uncontested here with Immortal Sun? Or did they have a Reckless Rage in hand after all? Alright, I'll take it. Now with Immortal Sun going, we have a good chance of winning this. We'll still need to find answers to like a feather if it comes down. As we see it here. Ooh, Feather got a new animation as well. Alright, so they they just wanted to wait to cast the Reckless Rage with Feather in play, which makes sense. Also, that did give us the opportunity to get mana with the Mox Amber to cast Immortal Sun in the first place. I think I want to make them spend 4 mana here. Or a 4 life, get them low. So maybe Traxos can kill them. Alright, that's a nice set of draws. Can play uh, two things here. I guess we're gonna go Traxos into Amara. Sadly, the two drops don't take full advantage of the Immortal Sun discount here. So we've got an 8 8, Trampley, Traxos, Amara, I guess, dies to the Reckless Rage. So that's not amazing. But let's say they had, I don't know, Defiant Strike in hand. Now instead of drawing cards, they're just casting the Reckless Rage. And maybe Traxos gets to survive if they don't have a second Reckless Rage. One can hope. War boss, that's not too bad. Ooh, Kethis, that's nice. And another Traxos. Let's get in there. What is Traxos eating up here? It's gotta be more than just a vanguard. So they have a backup feather maybe. God's willing also not too effective against an artifact. Yep, you got it. Now we trample over for even more. And now what? So I can play Kathis and then cast Traxus from the graveyard. That sounds appealing. And our opponent packs them up. Sweet. Managed to beat uh, Feather as well here with a nice synergistic draw. So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.